We were on the MSC Fantasia in Barcelona, Spain for a Mediterranean cruise. Kirk and I have been on MSC before, but in the Caribbean. So let me tell you, there are some big differences between cruising in North America versus in Europe. In this video, I am giving you an honest, no holds barred look at the good and the bad on board from embarkation to the cabin, the food, entertainment, and the people on board. I'll be breaking down our experience and sharing what we loved and what didn't quite meet our North American expectations. If you're curious about what it's really like to cruise with MSC in Europe, stick around. There is a lot to unpack. MSC Cruise Line boards and disembarks people in every port, unlike a lot of other cruise lines where you have thousands of people at a time trying to get on and off of the ship. We had just come off another ship in the same Barcelona terminal and literally walked from terminal E to A with our luggage. Our boarding time window was from 11 to 12 and it was very quick. We literally checked in within minutes. Our cabin was not ready, so we did have the opportunity to see the ship for a few hours when a lot fewer people were around. MSC is one of those cruise lines that will match your status of another cruise line. So in our case, we're at the highest level on princess cruises. So MSC recognizes that and gives you similar perks that show that you're a valued passenger. A few of the perks that being an MSC Gold member would give you is a welcome drink, fresh fruit in your cabin, a complimentary one hour thermal area session. You get to do that once per cruise, a MSC Voyagers Club complimentary gift and priority disembarkation in ports where a tender boat is required. And you also get a club photo and a complimentary birthday cake if it's your birthday. Well, when we were on the MSC in North America, we had no trouble getting any of these gold perks. However, on the Mediterranean cruise, we never did get our welcome drink and we never did get any kind of welcome package or any kind of information about the status match at all. So in general, other than having a gold colored MSC card, we didn't get any of the benefits that I had just mentioned. So we did go to the reception and ask about the welcome drink, and they said that there was a special invitation coming out, but it actually never did come, never arrived. So this is just one thing that I really found with MSC Fantasia is that they love to talk and love to make up stories, and then they don't follow through or provide any kind of resolution. In fact, we did try to get a hold of the front desk a few times during our trip for various reasons, and most of the time, nobody would even be at the desk or nobody would answer the phone. It would just ring and ring without anybody answering. So I guess if I were to evaluate the boarding process, I would give that a solid eight out of 10 and the status match program for this ship, I would give it a zero out of 10. By the way, at the end of this video, I'll give you a total rating of the ship's experience as a North American who travels the world full time on cruise ships. The number that I'm totaling may actually come as a surprise to you. We have been assigned quite a large balcony stateroom, number 11198, and I have a full YouTube tour here, and I'll link it below in the comments. It was a decent size overall. It had a queen bed, two end tables on either side of the bed, a small desk with a chair, table and a mirror, a TV, lamp and a couch. And the bed was two singles that were pushed together, which is pretty standard on cruise ships. But the two beds had this huge dip in the middle that caused us both to kind of slide into the middle. So it was actually a challenge to get into our own side of the bed at night. But for the most part, the room was pretty comfortable until we got new neighbors on the third day of our cruise. So sadly, this ship attracts a lot of groups of people, whether they're family or groups of friends. But regardless, they all like to hang out together on the balcony. And for us, it turned out that we were the unlucky neighbors on both sides of our balcony. 
So we had a really large balcony and our neighbors had the same style. So we noticed that all of their chairs from inside of their cabin would come out onto the balcony so that groups of six or more of them could all just sit and talk really loudly with one another. And plus they all smoke. So I think that the whole ship experience, especially in the privacy of our own cabin, would have been a lot better with a different clientele of people. This cabin, although it was really nice and you can see the room tour on YouTube, it was just really loud and really smoky, giving us no chance to unwind and relax. The bathroom, that was a good size and it was well lit and there was a lack of hot water in this room. So the first day that we were on the on the in the cabin we had no hot water and i was wondering if we were going to have to change rooms because it barely got lukewarm after running the water for so long but the hot water did get better on the fourth day and we were actually able to have our first completely hot water shower for the first time so if you're ever staying on the ship please also note that they do have shampoo and body soap, but they don't have conditioner or lotion. So we purposely purchased this cabin because of the angle of the balcony. The glass is clear and therefore you can get an amazing view of outside from inside of your cabin. What we didn't like about the balcony, again, is the fact that it seems that everyone on the ship smokes on their balcony. So there are signs and videos all over the ship asking people not to smoke, but trust me, in Europe, it seems like everybody does. We constantly had to run into our own cabin, close the door, because it was really honestly quite overwhelming. The ship does nothing about the smoking and they do not enforce their own rules about no smoking on balconies. And it's just unfortunate that as a non-smoker, there is almost nowhere to go without being affected by all of the smoke on the ship. So I would rate the cabin an eight, but I would rate the balcony a five because it really did attract a lot of smoke, a lot of voices and people turning up their music really loud. So I think maybe if we had been on at a different time, the rating would have been higher. So I would rate the help from customer service a two because they were never there. And when we when they were there, they didn't even help. So they didn't provide any solutions or any follow up, especially uh, in regards to the smoking. Overall, there were a handful of good moments and then the rest of the time was pretty uneventful and frustrating. So please keep in mind that these are only our opinions about our experience on the MSC Fantasia while on board. And also it is our opinion of coming from primarily North American ships. But before I get into these, could I please ask if you would take a minute to subscribe to this channel? I would really appreciate it. And it shows me that you're finding some value in these videos. So thank you so much for that. Number one, the MSC Fantasia is a cheap cruise and it attracts a lot of families and groups of friends traveling together because it is so affordable. So we did find a lot of kids on the ship and even a lot of babies. We also noted that there were packs of friends in all in the same room, the cabin, for instance. Um, there were a few groups of guys and men just hanging out on their balcony, calling out to people down below on the deck. So I guess it is a pro that MSC makes it affordable for everyone to travel together. But on the other hand, it's kind of a negative for other people who have to listen to it. Number two, compared to other cruise lines, considering the amount of people on the ship, there are not too many fun things to do. They have a show and a disco at night, but honestly, unless you want to learn to dance within a large, pushy group or sit in a crowded hot tub, there isn't much to do. I have a video about the entertainment on the ship, and you will see a few features, including the disco, and I will link it in the description below for you. 
Number three, one big difference between a lot of the ships that we've been on and the MSC Fantasia is that they have people embarking and disembarking at every single port. The rotation of passengers is always different. It is a large ship and it holds over 4,300 passengers and 1,300 crew. So despite the size, the ship didn't feel as stable or as smooth as other large ships that we've been on. We did feel the ship rock a lot during the day and the night. Number four, the MSC Fantasia is a cheap cruise, but on board, it is way more expensive than other cruise lines that we've been on. We literally just got off another ship on the, on the exact same area and they had the same things for sale, but they were more than double in price on the MSC Fantasia. Also, MSC Fantasia will make sure that it gets its money for anything. For example, one night, our new waiter opened a bottle of wine for us before he had realized that we asked for a different kind of wine. But because he opened it, he told us he would be charged for the bottle. So obviously, I felt like we had to purchase the wine as well as the other one that we actually ordered so that he wouldn't get penalized. But I don't think that the waiter should have felt threatened by his manager for an innocent mistake on his part. Number five, the ship is well over 20 years old, and you can tell. There were many parts of the ship where it smelled like old smoke and other parts that smelled like urine. The public washrooms were never really clean, and the restaurant chairs, if you managed to find a table, usually had crumbs or other food kind of all over everything. And the overall sense in those restaurants, especially the buffet, was that the workers were just really overworked. Entertainment on a ship is my favorite topic. As you may or may not know, I was a performing arts teacher in Toronto, Canada for over 20 years. So I do have an appreciation of the work that goes into a show. In my opinion, the shows on the theatre were definitely worth going to. The theatre has a great layout, a great sound system, and really great entertainers. We really did like the shows overall. So the MSC Fantasia has a wonderful theatre with an amazing layout, and every seat in that theatre was super comfortable, and it gave a really good sight line to the stage. The sound system is really good and the entertainers are talented and professional and the shows overall were pretty great. I think that the shows on the theater were a highlight of the cruise. And as I mentioned before, I have a short video about some of the entertainment on this ship and I think you should watch it. Um, and I will link that in the description below for you as well. And overall, I would rate the entertainment as a whole as a 7 out of 10 because honestly, there still really wasn't anything to do on the ship other than watch these shows. There is a huge variety of food on this ship, right down from the buffet to the sit-down dinners. The MSC Fantasia has a vegan main dish in their regular menu but there is no appetizer option for vegans though. It was nice to have the vegan option in the same menu as we didn't feel out of place asking for something different or waiting for another menu like other cruise lines make you do. So it was already in the menu for us. So if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, the other good thing about the dinner menu is that they always had pasta and steamed vegetables available. So if you didn't like the vegan option, you could always select the pasta and the steamed vegetables. The buffet was pretty incredible though, because there were just so many options for vegans that you actually couldn't even believe it. There was a cheeseless pizza, lots of salad, a lot of veg vegetarian uh, food, like ethnic Mediterranean choices, and just so much more. The challenge actually was trying not to overeat because you wanted to sample everything. The food, in my opinion, was really good. It was creative and it was never the same thing. 
They had chefs who knew exactly what we could eat and what we couldn't eat. And there was absolutely no problem at all finding anything to eat at any time. In my opinion, the food was very good. And if I could dare say it, I think that the vegan options and the food quality on the ship has been our favorite out of all the ships that we had been on in this past year. We ended up having a dinner service at a table for six, and the experience was better than expected as we had exceptional table mates. The restaurant was divided into two timings, and you're not allowed to be more than 15 minutes late, or you wouldn't even be allowed to join your table, and I guess you'd have to go to the buffet. So I would rate the food a nine, and the food service also a nine. Okay, now it's time for Tori's tips. The MSC Cruise Line matches your status on certain cruise lines. Not that MSC Fantasia actually did anything in this case, but we were supposed to get a free drink, the free thermal spa visit, priority, embarking and disembarking, and a couple other bonuses. So I suppose if we were on a different ship with better customer service um, or with a longer itinerary, this probably wouldn't have been overlooked. But at any rate, if you have a high status on another cruise line, you may get lucky and actually get the perks. Tori's tip number two, MSC Cruise Line also gives a bit of a discount for service people. For example, in my case, I was a high school teacher in Toronto, Canada, and all I had to do was produce evidence of this and we got another discount on this cruise. Number three, MSC uses the old style of cruise card that you cannot punch a hole into, so you need to bring um, or purchase a lanyard to hold your gold card. Tori's tip number four, MSC uses Starlink for their internet, but in our case it was very unreliable for some reason. It didn't work at all for one of our six days, and it constantly booted us off. Even after calling for customer service, nobody seemed to care. They just kept saying it will turn back on soon. But overall, it was pretty frustrating. Tori's tip number five. The MSC Fantasia is a heavy smoking ship. Everyone seems to disregard the rules about smoking on balconies. So just be aware of this. They make the rules, but they don't enforce it. Number six, there is no information or any real customer service on the ship. For example, we would call down to reception and nobody would answer, or we would go to reception and nobody would be there. We would ask questions and when we did get somebody, we would get a made up story. So we really had no information about disembarking until an hour before we were leaving our bags outside of the door. So it was just like we were a couple of people in a hotel room, not really connected to the experience of the ship. So we never really felt so disconnected from a ship experience before. So I would rate the internet as a two, the ship as a whole, maybe a three, and the cost an eight. And at the end of the video, I will reveal how the entire experience rates out of 100. As I had already stated before, I honestly believe that if this ship were traveling with a different clientele, it would have been a lot better. I believe that if this ship were in North America, we wouldn't have been exposed to so much smoking or maybe not so many pushy people. There were just people who literally just stood in front of elevator doors and wouldn't even move out of the way. There were people who would stand at the food in the buffet and eat from it, eat from the buffet if it was like their own plate. And there were people who would just step in front of you as if you didn't exist. So overall, this particular ship and the itinerary exceeded the capacity and therefore it just always felt full. It felt packed. It was pushy and overall not very comfortable. There was nowhere to go to escape from the crowds and nowhere to go to escape from the smoke. I guess we got what we paid for. So we were in a large balcony and the cost was $1,300 US 
for the two of us for six days. Like I said, it would have been a lot better if we could use the balcony comfortably. To be honest, it was the first time we were really excited about leaving a ship. So again, we've been on other MSC cruises and we did like them. So please keep this in mind that this video is based on this particular experience with MSC Fantasia. I don't see us booking any more itineraries on this ship, but because the food and the entertainment is so good, we would consider booking MSC again in the future, as long as it was on a longer itinerary, hopefully to eliminate the groups, like the large groups of people traveling together and on a ship that enforces a no smoking policy. So what do these totals add up to out of curiosity? Well, on my little fun chart, it works out to 59 out of 100, so 59%. Anyway, I hope that you found some value in this review of the MSC Fantasia, and please don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on our other ship reviews and cruise budget hacks that we offer as we travel the world by cruise ship. I will link a cruise review playlist in the description below, and I'll make sure to link some of the other videos that I mentioned throughout this video as well. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.